This is um, a wonderful Tom Waits song, which uh, is called All the World is Green. All the world is green, or it should be. Next election, all of Ontario should be green. Truth of the matter is, any of the parties in that constituency would have been more than delighted to have you as their candidate. Wow. Our problems are so intense. We need the best from every party. Uh, no one has the the single uh, holy grail of truth about every issue. So uh, intelligent uh, men and women putting themselves forward welcome ideas from other parties. And so a strong voice such as yours together with Mike Schreiner uh, would be an effective counterweight to that party discipline, which is uh, choking uh, discussion in our current political environment. So that you don't let the folks who would rather say, well, I've always voted conservative, always voted liberal, hide behind that because that's not good enough anymore. We can bring back the old days again. All the world was green. We have such demonization these days of people in other parties. And that makes it really difficult to work together to face huge challenges like climate change. How do you think we can get past this habit of bitter partisan attacks so that we can work across party lines for the common good? Julian, do you want to go first? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for uh, inviting me here. It's a pleasure to be here and to uh, be part of your exciting campaign. Um, in giving some thought to that question, uh, after having been a team member for you know many, many decades, I uh, got the orange apparel to prove it. Um, and yet I know many uh, successful politicians who have really talked about focusing on the things that people can agree on as opposed to the things that divide them. And that seems elementary, but uh, I think it's worth restating. I think it's really important to get across the partisan lines to talk about the problems that affect us all as neighbors and colleagues and friends and relatives and say, hey, how are we going to fix these problems? What makes sense? And I think that's a key to success. Tom? How do you see the way back to working together? Well, one way is one reason why I'm here uh, this evening, which is you look at the men and women who are putting themselves forward. You look at the quality of candidates. You look to see if they add some breadth of vision or are they reading uh, notes prepared by uh, some uh, anonymous uh, hack back in a party office. Do, do we have people who are independent thinkers? and? Uh, who are, uh, parties are important. I've been a member of one for most of my life. Uh, we need parties to help organize electorates and platforms, but so are individuals. And you look for quality people in every party. And when we have someone like you, who's an exceptional uh, set of assets and qualities to go forward, then that becomes far more important than whatever particular party affiliation one usually supports. Well, Start with the candidate. Thank you, Tom. Hugh, are you uh, are you ready? Would you like to to comment on this? This is the question: How do we get past hyper partisanship and find ways to work across party lines? I don't think that history is predictive, but I think history is instructive. Um, I remember um, when I was growing up, one of the great uh, figures in the Conservative Party was a chap by the name of Dalton Camp. But when Prime Minister Mulroney uh, was Prime Minister, he made Mr. Camp a senior policy advisor in the Privy Council office. And one of his focuses was the environmental issue with respect to the old growth uh, in Clayoket Sound in, in uh, British Columbia. And uh, Dalton hired a young woman by the name of Elizabeth May, who was a Nova Scotian back then. And they together worked on dealing with that issue and made substantial progress. So party affiliation had nothing to do with getting the job done. Part of why I'm so delighted to endorse you for the seat you're seeking in the provincial legislature and why I think it's important that on climate change and other issues, we have the capacity to set party affiliation aside to work together for good people who will make a real difference. Do you think we can 
make people feel comfortable, safe enough to vote for something different, given the crisis that we're in? I think I think one of the first points is uh, is there is there a galvanizing issue that is more important than the old partisan attachments? Is it and so important? to vote the way you have in the past, that doing so without regard to actually getting something done on climate change, reducing our emissions, producing a sustainable long-term future for your children and grandchildren is really not as important as how you vote in the past. So um, the, the issues that you've got uh, are winning issues and you're the only person in this riding who can speak with the authority and the experience and the expertise that you have. And that is, you're unchallenged. And so if you've got that trump card, just keep playing it. And certainly uh, in terms of the environment, but climate change, but also I want to mention, because I was so admiring of your work as environmental commissioner, the issue of water, safe, clean, potable water here in Ontario and indeed across Canada, threatened on so many fronts um, that these are, these are, absolutely essential to life itself. Yeah. I think part of the process is how the question is put. And I think um, your capacity to do that because of your own skill set, because of the reputation you bring to the battle as a candidate, to the important process of moving our government forward, our province forward on the climate change issue in a timely way so that we do not see what happens if we don't do it properly. Life is just too short for so cold. As you know, I'm running with a small party that uh, until Mike Schreiner got elected, didn't have any seats in Ontario. Uh, I know so, we're talking about the realities of the 21st century now, but when you began, Diana, talking about small parties and whether they could have an influence, you know, if we look at history uh, in Canada, there was the Ginger Group with J.S. Wordsworth, four or five of them only, uh, and they were the people who brought, persuaded Mackenzie King to bring in old age pension uh, in 1927 and, and many other, uh, I can give many other examples since. So whenever we have been through really serious, serious challenges, I think of the world wars and all the rest, we've had unity governments, we've had coalition governments. Why would that be? Because that is the only way to make progress and the sort of candidacy and, and I would think contribution you can make is of such a substantial higher nature than that being offered by the other political parties in your constituency. On and, on. and so on Mike Schreiner has been a very effective leader. You're the deputy leader and Ontario would be fortunate to double that representation and double the voice um, of the Green Party and the issues that you've been talking about at Queen's Park. And that's that's the message that you can make a difference. and and whether it's a coalition or whoever forms government, having the two of you there would be twice as effective as having one. And that's a pretty straightforward message to people. Well, thank you. And I certainly agree with you and that that's uh, part of why I'm running. You just desperately yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would you, what's your message to young voters as to why they should bother to vote uh, what should give them hope? What kind of change can they realistically demand? I would argue, if I may, Diane, that um, in the event people of your capacity and skill are not elected, and we have a parliament made up of people with no particular affinity on this issue, no one's going to pay a higher price for a longer period of time than those very young people who we need to have show up and vote. Um, I say to young voters, if you don't vote, you're leaving the decision to old people who do go and vote because they know that if they vote, they preserve the situation that's been very good for them. And statistics show that wealthy people vote for the same reason. They like to preserve the status quo because it's been very good for them. Uh, I think that young people should take the matter into their own hands and start to make changes so that we live in a better Ontario. And in this context, in this riding, in this election, the definition of new solution is Diane Sachs. I really wish we could move out somewhere. 
Dr. Salima Jawani was one of Diane's early endorsers. We're really thrilled to have a successful local business person here to lead the endorsement section of our event. So uh, I'm, I'm here today because I've known Diane for almost five years and I continue to be impressed by her work on environmental issues and the protection of the climate and energy. But I'm actually more impressed with who she is as a person, as a woman, um, as a leader. And I, I think she's the right person to drive home some change and to make people, but also other political leaders feel safe enough to have discussions around protecting the environment and share in her vision for a clean, sustainable and energy efficient economy. Well, asking me how things are. Soon they'll ask me how things work. Hi, my name's Barbara Hall. I spent a dozen years as a municipal politician and then mayor of Toronto. And I'm proud to be endorsing Diane Sachs for MPP in University Rosedale in the upcoming provincial election. There are a lot of really hot issues, but climate needs to stay at the top of the pile. She's very knowledgeable about the environment. Diane is smart. She doesn't shy away from, from issues. She's a clear, intelligent voice. She knows very well how to speak truth to power. You know, I think about my kids and my grandkids and I'm worried what is going to be there for them. Diane's voice is something that will force this issue to be dealt with and we'll all be better off for that. My name is Barbara Hall, and I'm proud to be endorsing Diane Sachs for MPP in University Rosedale in the upcoming provincial election. Um, we do have another endorsement from a very well-known personality in our community. Hi, I'm R.H. Thompson. Endorse Diane Sachs. How could I not endorse Diane Sachs? She's amazing. She's smart, she's informed, she's experienced, she knows a climate file, she knows government, she knows public policy. Why would we not want her sitting in the legislature for the Green Party? Go for it. I'd like to invite uh, Tom to share with us why it is that he is supporting Diane. Um, and I know personally, when I talk about her being a superior candidate, it's not just her character and her background. I've seen her work as a public educator, as environmental uh, commissioner. And if she can carry that into the uh, legislature, we'll have a tremendously strong advocate for a better future for Ontario and Canada. Well, so who can you trust to stand up for things that are important? Uh, uh, an NDP or a liberal um, MPP who's going to do whatever the leader's office says, or Diane Sachs? That's a rhetorical question. We know the answer to that. It works. Um, and I think there's a very real chance that this coming election will not see any party get a majority. It'll be a minority parliament. And then the individual voices of every MPP will matter. So I ask myself, who is going to have the courage in the Parliament of Ontario to stand up every day and confront the government of the day, if it's not a green government, which it's unlikely to be, with the realities that have to be addressed. And I come up with one person, and that is Diane Sachs. Louisiana. Louisiana. Thank you so much, Hugh and Tom and, and Julian. Salima and Brian, thank you for helping make this wonderful evening. I've cried a couple of times. Um, <laughs> I appreciate all everybody's good wishes. Anybody who likes what I stand for, likes what we stand for, you got to help make it happen. Please, please, please come join us, help us. Let's make this real. Thank you. Thank you very much.